All right, a big hello to everyone. I hope you're enjoying your final few days of April here. I wanted to do a quick video on a couple of our top Sand Sheets models. Sand Sheets, if you're not familiar, is a plugin for Google Sheets that allows you to use the Santiment API to sort data any way you'd like, or you can use models that we've already made using Google Sheets, make a copy of them, make them your own, you could either use them as is or customize them with your own favorite assets. And it's a really, really cool feature um, <clears throat> that I recommend to everyone. That said, we're going to start by looking a little bit at MVRV, which is arguably our top two or top three indicator on Santiment. It is an on-chain metric <clears throat> that essentially lets you measure what the high or low is for the average trader. You hear all the time, you know, buy low, sell high, but when it comes to crypto, it's easier said than done to actually look at a specific price and say, this is a low compared to the past three months or six months or two years. Uh, it's very difficult to actually look at different time frames and decide this is the ultimate time frame that I should base my scale on in terms of how to buy low versus high. So what MVRV does is it gives you a bunch of different options of time frames to look through and say, okay, on a short term time scale, this looks to be a very low or a very high range for how traders have been doing. Or you can go to a super long time scale and do the same thing. And a lot of that really depends on your own strategy. Are you a swing trader? Are you a day trader? Are you someone who really kind of just buys and sets it and forgets it and whatever happens with the price fluctuations, you're not going to be touching it for six plus months or two plus years. So the MVRV is a great tool to give you a guide on where the rest of the field is in terms of their success uh, on their return for that particular asset. And as a lot of videos go, we're going to use Bitcoin as an example, but MVRV is available for hundreds of different uh, assets out there on Santiment, mainly Ethereum-based or ERC-20s that use the Ethereum network blockchain. Uh, but let us know uh, at the end of this video, just drop a comment down below and let us know if you can um, give us some questions in terms of things we can clarify further make things easier, or even look into some other blockchains to try to make this available um, if it's a priority to you. So that said, uh, I'm on the Academy page right now. You can see academy.santiment.net slash metrics slash MVRV slash hashtag definition. You can really just go to academy.santiment.net slash metrics and find tons and tons of different metrics out there with comprehensive explanations and the math behind them to all of these different metrics just like this one. Um, you'll also notice there's a video that I made a couple of years ago about uh, MVRV and how it's used. It's still very relevant, so feel free to check that video out on this Academy page. The link to all of these will be in the description. Uh, in terms of what MVRV is, it shows the ratio between the current price and the average price of every coin slash token acquired. Uh, they mean during a certain time interval. So if you're looking at the 30-day MVRV, then you're looking at the average price of every coin slash token acquired in that 30-day period. So traders that have been active in the past 30 days, what we're essentially doing is measuring, are they in profit or well below profit or kind of right around break even? And as you can imagine, the more zoomed out you go, if you look at like the one-day <laughs> MVRV, versus the one year MVRV, the scale for what is considered super, you know, profitable or super at a loss is much more tight for a one day uh, time frame than a one year MVR, MVRV time frame. So in terms of how it's measured, um, market value to realize value, by the way, is the ratio definition and full explanation of what MVRV stands for. But the MVRV ratio is used as an on-chain indicator for the purpose of studying aggregate investor behaviors as price moves to or from their cost basis. It can be considered a mean reversion style model where the realized cap 
functions as the mean and MVRV measures deviations from this mean. The value of an assets given MVRV, MVRV gives an idea of how much overvalued or undervalued an asset is based on short, mid, or long-term time frames. It goes further into the explanation and even gets into the mathematics behind it. Feel free to check it out, especially if you're a, a you know, uh, high-end analytical mind who really likes to understand the concepts of things on a deep level. Uh, but I'll kind of show some visuals that should simplify a lot of what's being shown in this academy. Um, you can, of course, find MVRV straight on sentiment uh, on the charts page. And here, what I've done is I just added three different kind of short to mid-range, mid-range or mid to long-range time frames and comparing them all on the same chart. I added the 30-day, 90, and 180. And then what I did is I clicked on each of these buttons here and I clicked on pin axis for all three of these MVRVs, not the price, because price is not going to be the same type of scale as MVRV, but for the purpose of getting everything on that same zero axis, this pin axis button here is extremely helpful to kind of set everything and make it organized. Otherwise, this red, yellow, and blue area chart, they'd all be on their own axes and it would be kind of messy. Um, so here we're looking at how successful the 30-day traders are here in red we can see that they're actually down 3.8% overall. The 90-day, they're actually down 0.649%, so almost dead even in terms of the returns that traders have experienced over the past 90 days. 180-day, <coughs> excuse me, starting to get over a cough here a little bit. 180-day um, traders are still up about 10% on average, you would actually think going back six months, I mean, especially with the big bull cycle starting just a little before this cutoff point, right, right around like October 17th or 18th, you'd think that they're up a lot more, but because of so much FOMO and people that are buying in or selling off at non-ideal prices, they're only up an average of 10% despite, you know, just looking at the past six months holding shift here. Look at the top left of my screen where that bubble is. It's showing that the average return of, I can get, oh, I see why I gotta make sure that the price is part of this initial portion, that's good enough. Yeah, they're up, they're up about 82%, the prices that is. So just to give you a concept of how um, non-ideal many trades go, even though the price of Bitcoin is up 82% in six months, the average returns are only up about 10% during that time. That's pretty crazy to me. Uh, that being said, what I'm trying to illustrate here is when you see low points like this, that means you're actually buying in. Let's say you trade on a 30-day scale. You'd be buying in while the average 30-day trader is down 3.8%, meaning there's less risk than the average historical point in which you'd be buying in. On the 90-day scale, you're pretty much break even. And then on the 180-day scale, even though prices have corrected here, you can see that Bitcoin is down about 14% since that all-time high on the 14th of March. Uh, the 180-day returns are still very high, meaning if you're trying to invest in the long term, there could be more ideal moments than now. Now, certainly being at plus 10% here isn't nearly as scary is if you were to buy into Bitcoin while, while average traders are up 49% like they were here at the beginning of March. Um, just understand that this isn't, uh, it's not a science where you just always wait until things go negative because sometimes you'll miss out on that point. Right here, for example, in late January, these two MVRVs were both in the negative range indicating it's a good time to get in on the short term. But if you were kind of really trying to get precise and wait for the 180 day here in blue to get below the zero axis, you would have missed the boat on a whole lot of gains uh, from the, this point to the all time high, Bitcoin went up 87%. So you don't wanna to get too precise sometimes. Sometimes just looking at you know, two out of three of these is good enough uh, to, 
to decide that, you know, on the short and midterm, people are, are very much at a loss. I can, I can be okay with the long term still being a little in profit here and having some increased risk by having the 180 day being still in the positive range here. So if we went back in time, for example, and then I'll move on here, uh, let's go back two and a half years. So the last time we saw everything in the negative range was late August, early September of 2023. And during that time, we can see that, you know, the 30 day MBRV was as low as negative 4%. 90 day was about negative 10 and a half and the 180 day was a little below negative 9%. So when the short, mid and long-term returns of the average trader are all below 0%, you're buying it at a really uh, historically more probable time of prices going up in the near future. And obviously that proved to be true quite well here in mid-September uh, with prices back then Bitcoin was only just a hair above 25K. If we went back earlier and we go to the pre precise time that Sam Bankman freed and FTX was collapsing and you know the, the downfall of that whole story really collapsed prices and put a lot of fear in traders' minds regarding the future of crypto, got as low as to the 15Ks uh, in terms of Bitcoin's market value. This would have been a great time to buy, obviously, if you're buying in everyone else's fear. Uh, same with mid-June, a few months before the FTX collapse. You can see how all the MBRVs are extremely low. This was during the time when the U.S. Fed was just increasing interest rates like crazy. So it would have been a great time there um, when everyone else was dumping due to overreactions of the interest rate hikes going on. All right, so that's a little recap of how MVRV is illustrated on Sandbase. Now what I wanna do is actually look at the MVRV Midterm Opportunity and Danger Zone Divergence Model. And this is a really cool model because what it does is it blends all of those MVRVs from different time frames together, specifically the 30-day, 90-day, and 180-day MVRV, and gives us an idea of how they all look combined based on their elastic ranges of what's considered abnormal, right? So um, here, when they were all in an abnormally high range, this was basically a danger zone. When it was here in like an abnormally low range or even lower here, these were those opportunity zones where everyone is underwater and you'd be buying in at way less risk. So going back to the model, you can see actually right now most assets, uh, you know, looking at this, probably 90, almost 95% of them are in some sort of semi underbought or underbought range. And the higher up they go, you'll notice they're more green. And <coughs> the longer the bar is, uh, especially if it's over this dashed line, that means it's in a top 5% best opportunity zone compared to all of history. Uh, for that particular asset. So you can see, you can just hover over these when you use this model yourself, and there's instructions on how to do so in the video. Bella Protocol, uh, Frax Share, P Network. These are just a few that are, are actually at or above that big dashed line, indicating they're in a very good spot, assuming that the asset is a viable investment and they're not rug pulls. I, I'm not going to get into the uh, specifics of any of these projects, but assuming that the asset is going to recover okay with the rest of the crypto markets recovering eventually, these would be some of the best assets out there right now because of how underwater traders are in a zero-sum game. On the other hand, overbought assets include High Street, Mantra Dow, and SSV network, which have all been on pretty big runs recently, and that's why they're kind of the exceptions to the rest of the market right now. So you can also take different different types of views. You can go to um, the data tab and actually alter the types of assets that you want to take a look at. Um, they're all preset here in row one, but if you were to look up the slug that you wanted, and just replace them, you could do so and make your own custom version of this chart. It's really, really cool. 
So that's kind of a recap of MVRV and how we use it, why we find it so useful. And this Sandsheets model is kind of the, uh, the perfect way of, of understanding everything and digesting everything quickly, comparing asset to asset without having to look at multiple lines like this on the charts page on sentiment and, and redo that same process for you know Ethereum and all of these different assets one at a time, this does all the work for you. So our community really loves it. The people who I've talked to who've made copies of it, they, they really enjoy being able to have everything on one chart here to make quick comparisons uh, from project to project. Now we have shifting gears here a little bit. We have an asset activity matrix uh, here, which is uh, a way to understand which networks are the hottest or coldest. And I like this a lot because it works similarly to the MVRV where you're getting a lot of information all on one screen, uh, arguably too much because you've got red, yellow, blue, green squares all over the place. But the short explanation is the redder that the network is, especially on the current day. So you'll notice each box has you know, the last six or seven days if it's after uh, the end of the market close day, but before midnight happens. Right now it only shows six days based on the time of this recording. But for example, Power Ledger, you see a whole lot of red here. This indicates that each metric that is being measured is generally a hotter, uh, more active moment in time today than it has been on average for the past three months. For here, the exception would be uh, mean dollar age, which apparently means that the dormant tokens haven't been moving much. But in short, if we look at active addresses, network growth, whale transactions, key stakeholders that have between $100,000 to a $1 million in that asset, even social dominance, dominance getting into the social end of things, exchange inflow and outflow, and age consumed, all of these metrics, uh, with the exception of mean dollar age, indicate that Power Ledger is getting a ton of activity on its network right now. The reason that's important is because based on what I have tested, when you see really active networks, it often indicates a reversal is about to occur. And Power Ledger, uh, in terms of its price direction, has been moving down, down 3% in the past 24 hours. That's what that leftmost box means. 5% in the past seven days. That's what the second box means. The third box is 90 days, indicating power ledgers down a whopping 26%. And then 180 days, which is, means it's down 4% during that time. Uh, so based on all of those time frames, indicating power ledger's been going down, and the fact that its network has suddenly really heated up with a ton of activity, this increases the probability, doesn't guarantee, but increases the probability of that specific asset about to turn around and potentially go on a price pump, assuming that Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto markets can stay stable uh, long enough for it to, for that to be able to come to fruition. So on the other hand, if you look at like quant, it's very cold as indicated by its blue label right here, by averaging all of the most recent day's boxes together, it's indicating that quant is uh, seeing very little activity compared to its past three months of daily data. So whatever the trend is here, it's more likely to continue. And even though it's up a little bit today, for the last week, 30 days and 90 days, it's down, meaning it is not as much of a breakout candidate for a sudden pump the way, you know, Power Ledger or Project Galaxy is, Acropolis is another candidate here, Lever, stuff like that, where you're getting a lot of um, drops in that asset followed by a huge spike in network activity. These are, are really, really helpful for uh, identifying which assets might be preparing for a big decoupling from the market. Now, if you don't wanna look through all of these colored boxes and, and digest this much data, you can also just look at the leaderboard and find which assets are up the most on a one day time frame or down the most here in reverse order in the red section, seven day, 30 day, 90 day. And then we've got active address leaders. We can see the power ledger, which I just mentioned, 
It's having its highest active address day in the past three months. That's what this one indicates. A three for threshold means it's having its third highest day. So it's just ranked chronologically that way. Network growth, same thing. Whale transactions, key stakeholders with $100,000 to a million dollars. Social dominance, exchange flow, which means that the coins seeing the most outflow, basically moving away from exchanges, uh, that's what's ranked highly by this model. Mean dollar invested age, which is a measurement of dormant activity and age consumed. And then it blends it all together, even if you want to take, you know, all eight of these metrics and seeing how um, high its activity is all blended together. You've got this measurement. You can see Power Ledger is third, Threshold is second, and Acropolis is actually seeing the highest uptick in network activity compared to its normal resting state over the past three months. So these are probably the two most powerful Sandsheets models right now. And I highly recommend checking them out and letting me know what you guys think. I'm always here to clarify these models further um, and come up with concepts to create new models for. So thank you so much for checking these out, guys. Hopefully this was helpful between this model's explanation and the detailed uh, kind of summary of how MVRV works. And I will talk to you next time.